morning stampers it's Fiona Whitehead here from craftystamping.blogspot.com and I've got something slightly different for you today I'm going to be doing a series of best birds videos and just showing you how much you can do with one stamp set um, this is the best birds and it also does have the framelit so I will be using those as well uh, so maybe that's cheating a little bit but um, this is what I thought I'd do rather than just use lots of sets I'd do maybe five different videos showing you some different ways of using this stamp set. I love this set. I'm so pleased that it's staying for another year. So there's a selection here, but today I'm going to do this one, this little gentle one here, which I think um, would work well for a sympathy card as well, wouldn't it? Um, and I, I just, I love birds anyway. And um, so let's get going. I'm going to use mint macaron because as you know it's leaving us and it was one of my favorite colors so i thought it deserved an outing just before it goes i think i've got one more sheet of cardstock left of it and then um, then that will be it it'll be gone so let's get going i'm going to start with uh, our piece of uh, cardstock cut in half and then a piece of white which is five and three quarters by three and three quarter inches uh, oh which oh look i can do the the, the centimetres for you just down here. Look at that. So that's 10 centimetres by 15 centimetres, if you need to know that. This is what's brilliant about our grid paper. In case you hadn't realised, it is two-sided. On the one side is the centimetres and on the other side is the inches. So you have the best of both worlds. And don't ever anybody say you don't need grid paper because I just love it. It's so good for lining up. For, you've got a little wish list up here. You've got your notes down there. And if you were to actually look at the one that's on my desk, which I can't show you because it is just covered in notes and ideas and just all sorts of stuff. And then I try and save them with all my little bits of notes written all over them. Anyway, I'm going on a bit. Let's get doing our um, stamping. Now, one of the uh, set, uh, stamps in here, which I love, is the crackle. I don't know what else to call it. Maybe it's supposed to be like a bird's nest, do you think? That's possibly what it is, but it's so great as a background stamp, whether you're using it for this set or for any set. It's just a great one to use. I'm just rummaging in the background for my bigger stamp here. So I'm going to use, as I said, mint macaron. Um, and then I'm going to be using our watercolour pencils just to colour in the bird. But I'm going to try and just do as much mint macaron as we can manage. So I'm just going to stamp this up. I'm going to stamp it off, actually, because I just want it to be a little bit paler. And I'm just going to do a couple of them. Stamp off again. That gives us extra inks, doesn't it? Stamp on, stamp off. Does anybody remember the old... Um... I'm showing my age here now. Um, Jane Fonda videos. She used to do the windows, wipe on, wipe off when she was doing her fitness videos. Anyway, there we go. Um, you know me, I love to sponge edges. I'm going to sponge the edges. I'm not going to crackle the edges on this one. I'm just going to sponge them. And I'm going to use one of our sponges. If you haven't seen our sponges, they come in a bag like this. You get three in a bag and you cut them up into, well, I cut them up into fours. So it makes them a little bit more manageable. And look how many you get out of them. So they'll last you forever. And they're so easy to work with and great for um, sponging with our inks. So I'm just going to sponge, quickly sponge the edges. I just think sponging softens it a little bit. But I know some people don't like it. They like the crisp, clean look. But I quite like the grungy look a little bit. It's all this, the paper's crackling as well as the crackle stamp I've used. There you go. It's only gentle, but it does sort of lift it and it will lift it a little bit when it's on the on the background paper. Now I'm going to take our bird, bird, and will he fit on that one? No, let's put him on the bigger one. I'm going to stamp him in early espresso, just so he's not too harsh, because I don't really want a blackbird. Not that I've got anything against blackbirds, I love them, I love their song. But he's not, what is he, a little thrush? Or a little blue tip or a robin. It's going to be great for Christmas cards, this one. I'm going to be using him as a robin on my Christmas cards. So watch out for that lot come Christmas. Right, so let's just stamp him on there in the early espresso. And I'm using the thin lid, as I mentioned. Here it is. Just move that out of the way. I'm just going to run him through the big shot. The detail on this little bird is so pretty, isn't it? Let's just grab the big shot. 
Mm, yeah. I'm doing this, the birds, for my ladies next month in May for our crafting lesson. They all spotted them yesterday. We were doing Jar of Love. They all went home really happy with their jars of bouquet flowers. And then I said we would be doing birds next month. So I haven't quite decided which one we'll do yet, but we might start off with this one and then move on to something slightly more tricky. They started off as beginner crafters last month and already they're seasoned crafters. Doesn't take long with stamping up, you know. It really doesn't. Okay, there's my bird. And I'm going to use the watercolour pencils to colour him in. And I'm going to use the brown, which is that one. And I think let's make him a blue, a blue bird. Blue bird. Pacific Point. Oh no, what's, what's this one? Bermuda Bay. Uh, no, let's have the Pacific Point. There it is. And we'll make him a, a blue bird. So just simply, well, I'm going to do it rushed. You can obviously take a lot more time over his colours. Try and get your shading for his colours darker in some places than others so that it shows up a little bit more. Just want a little bit of brown just and his insides there. And then come along with the blue. That's pretty, isn't it? Pretty little bird. When you're taking your time, colouring is a lot more relaxing. I'm just going to put a little bit of blue down there just so he gets a, it's almost like a kingfisher, but he's not, is he? Right, just grab the blender pen. Make sure I haven't got any red on that. And let's just blend all that in. And that's where the magic begins. There you go. You could also obviously add a few more colours, but I'm just going to keep him like this for now. There we go. Do his little feeties as well. There. Super. There's our little bird. Oh, there goes my clock again. Doesn't matter what time I do my videos, my clock always has to have something to say. All right, I'm going to use the branch, but I'm not going to use the thinlet this time. I'm just going to do it straightforward as um, as a flat stamping, if that makes sense. And I am going to use the early espresso again. So that's two inks I'm using, isn't it? Plus the watercolours. Not too bad though. Not too many inks. There we go. Let's just pop him out of the way. And we'll just sort of lay it on there like that. There we go. I missed a little bit there. You can stand on that bit. There you go. That's fine. And I'm going to just grab the old olive as of here. That's not it. There it is. That is just to do the leaves. Again, you can do some darker in places than others. And then pick up the colour to give yourself your shading. I mean, shading is something that I think just comes with practice. Unless you've actually been taught how to do it by a sort of a design angle but you do just get a feel for how to do it sometimes it shows up better on the card than it does on the videos there we just run that through i don't need to put any um ink on for the the branch look it's just going to pick up the ink that we've got there anyway there we go my old bird is just going to sit there. There you go. Now, I'm using the thoughts for you because it's just, I'm just doing this as a delicate card, but obviously you can use the happy birthday as well. Thoughts for you. And we're going to do that also in the mint macaron. Just If I see if there's another way our grid paper is good, if you just pop that on there like that and line it up and then take your stamp, your block, then you have it perfectly aligned. I'm going to do a bit of um, shadow stamping off with this. Let's see if it will work full t uh, first time. So I'm going to do my thoughts for you there. Just make sure I've got the ink on that. I need my um, background pad for this. Here it is. 
I should really be using this for my stamping. There we go, that's better. My piercing mat, so I'm going to do that again. I'm going to just pop it on there. And then just very lightly, I'm just going to offset it a little bit. And you just get the shadow. It just gives such a pretty effect. It's so simple. So simple. There we go. Um, I did stamp a few little flowers down the bottom here. So you could carry on and just do a few of those in the mint macaron and then colour them in with anything you like. I'll just put a few down here and I've done a smudge there so that's a brilliant excuse for having to put some flowers in, isn't it? It's an embellishment opportunity, I think, is the, is the term. I think that's what Liz Shannon, another great demo, mentions when she says something. It's an embellishment opportunity, ladies. Love that, love that saying. I'm going to grab, what shall I have? I think I'll have the Calypso Coral. Is it slightly, that's not it, that's pumpkin pie. I don't want that one. It'd be easy if I just took all these out, wouldn't it? But I should be able to know by looking at the tops. So I'm testing myself, you see. So I am going to use Calypso Coral, just to keep that delicate colour going. Just a little bit on there. You could put some um, enamel dots on here as well. Some glitter or sparkle. Depends what sort of card your card is going to be, really. I always think sympathy cards don't need a lot of bling. They just need it to be nice and gentle. Um, and you can blend that in again. Just pick up our pen. It just softens the flower. I'm not colouring all of it. I'm just going to colour the middle. There we go. Super. Right, let's just glue this onto our card base, our card stock. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten my birdie. I will be doing him in a moment. Just going to glue that on. Stick that onto our card stock. Like so, get it lined up. There we go. Uh, you could put a little bit of ribbon on as well if you wanted to. Um, I'm just going to leave it just as it is. Now let's get some dimensionals. They are here. I know they're here somewhere. Here they are. And my pokey tool. I call it a pokey tool, so that's what it is. And there's our finished bird, all um, stuck onto his card. Lovely. So thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video. And pop back for another one in the Best Birds series. And don't forget, if you're in Hampshire and would like to come and join my classes, I run them regularly and you can shop with me online at fionawhite.stampingup.net. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.